There are many content creators that aim to create their own video game, filled with personality and charisma derived from the channel's personas. There was Stewart Simulator, created by PewDiePie, which had a discreet success, and Yogg's Ventures by Yogcast, that perhaps is best to forget. But today we're not discussing those projects, but rather Super Kane Magic Zero, a creation for the Italian YouTube channel Scodex, a cartoonist with a unique art style and a wacky sense of humor. And this is no mobile game, we're speaking about a 20 or so hour action adventure title released for major platforms. But how did the game come to be, and is the title any good? First things first, roll the intro. Simone Albrighi, better known as CEO, is an Italian cartoonist that runs the channel's codex, an animation channel similar in style to Tomska's ISDS movies. The channel is one of the biggest in Italy, and it traces back 10 years and more of weekly context with many hits in his career. His channel is full in Italian, but do not worry, today's game was translated in English as well as Spanish, Portuguese and French, and even Korean and Japanese, and is available on both PC as well as PlayStation and Nintendo Switch. About the game I will discuss more in detail in the review itself, but as introduced, we are not speaking of a casual title, but a fully developed RPG-like game that delivers an extensive adventure, with a big overworld to roam and many enemies to face, quite an ambitious premise for a YouTube developed game. However, let us take a step back and explain how all this came to be. In late 2014, the content creator CEO announced in a video that he was developing a title with Studio Evil, based on his comic books and videos. As you may have guessed, the announcement came with a crowdfunding request on the website Epola, basically an Italian Kickstarter, asking the public for at least 20,000 euros, a target that was reached quite extensively, receiving almost double the amount, with of course 10 bucks for myself. As any Kickstarter project, the game suffered many delays, and it was released in 2019, five years after the announcement. To be fair, the game itself evolved with time, starting off small as a multiplayer arena, to then generated dungeon crawler, to a complete RPG-like game that is today Super Kane Magic Zero. The announcement of the game was sold, that still considered developing it for the Wii U. About the developers, I do not have much to say. For what I've gathered, they are based in Bologna, Italy, and developed some smaller projects before Super Kane Magic Zero. The major projects that are listed in their website were an arcade game called Cider, a space bullet hell, Magi, a puzzle game, and Relief, a graphic adventure that quote, increases awareness about the topic of cardiopulmonary resuscitation, CPR. The other two games are free to play on Steam, while Cider has a free demo. Super Kane Magic Zero seems to be their most successful title yet, both from what the public and the reviews have to say. Also, support for the game seems constant even after 4 years from launch, with the latest noticeable update being released, uh, what, 2 weeks ago? After I finished the game? <laughs> what are the odds? Overall, unlike other games I've discussed in previous videos, Super Kane seems to have been a successful project. I'm not too sure if the cost of production of the game broke even with sales, but for what I can see, the developer seems to be very proud of the completed package, and hopefully they will develop more installments in the future. I've talked enough about the background of this game without talking about the game itself, so perhaps it is wise for me to review Super Kane Magic Zero properly and explain to you if this game suits you best. Let us start with this review. Super Kane Magic Zero is an action-adventure, RPG-like title similar to top-down view Zelda games like Link's Awakening, characterized with its unique art style. As I said earlier, the game is no mobile gacha, quick to play, as perhaps the graphics may initially suggest, but rather a full-on, complete adventure, filled with dungeons and worlds to explore. The game is set in the magical, wacky wonderland of Wolf, an open world full of interesting and unique locations, as wacky as you can imagine. The main objective of the game is to explore all levels to complete quests needed to progress through the story, itself as wacky as everything else. The core of the gameplay consists of defeating enemies by using the various weapons and armors scattered around the maps, all with unique bonuses and effects, useful or useless depending on the enemies faced. Super Kane is an action adventure all the way in, and many are the enemies and bosses ready to stop in your tracks, from giant fridges to not yet melted ice creams. The base structure of the game is functional, you explore various areas, you need to find the keys to progress and eventually face a boss at the end of every level, pretty straightforward. The game does offer the player the possibility to explore the walls freely, meaning that it's not as linear as you may imagine, but it is quite evident which areas are the easiest and which ones are the hardest. The game is not massive, after 10 or so hours you will have a good grasp of where every area is and how it's connected. Also the fact that the areas are quite distinct from each other helps in making them easily recognizable, you got your volcanoes, your snow mountains and everything in between. Do not underestimate the challenge the game offers, since some dungeons will give you a challenge and a half. The first areas are pretty straightforward, but the challenge rises sharply and I was caught off guard more than once. 
against life system makes it so that if you die too many times you need to restart from the beginning of the area, and there are some dungeons quite vast, meaning you can't brute force your way through. The game also offers a co-op mode that allows you and up to three of your fellow friends to complete the entirety of the adventure together, making the game more fun. Or at least I think, I played it alone. Damn it, where is Tito where I need him? The game's also rich in customization, being there are many characters to unlock as well as many weapons and armors to find. I did enjoy updating my gear depending on the area I was exploring. Besides, as you can see on screen, even the equipable items were as loony as the world that surrounded them. Speaking of, graphic and more specifically the art direction of Super Kali Magic Zero is very inspired. It is of course based on Seo's comic books and YouTube videos, which themselves I found to be very unique in style. It is evident how much fun he and his crew had when he managing all the different zany components that made the game so unpredictable and entertaining. I believe that without this component, the game would have been less appealing, even with the same gameplay. One out of the blue things that I found quite curious within the gameplay is the ability to eat anything, and when I say anything, I mean it. Every item in the game can be thrown and eaten, giving bonuses and maluses. Some items like food give you the former, while others damage you, but you do lock the ability to become capable of eating more things. I do need to say that the wackiness of it all on rare occasions is a bit distracting. The levels are a bit disorienting to navigate, not only to the high degree of wacky randomness, but unfortunately due to the user interface not quite to the standards. I got lost and stuck more than I'm willing to admit. Even if the dialogues and the quest descriptions may have absurd tone to them, they do convey important details that are easy to miss, so take them seriously. Another thing that you need to be very careful about is to be aware of side abilities and side quests. There are some things that at first seem to be facultative, but later become mandatory without a warning. To cite one example without doing spoilers, there is one item that can be obtained at the shop in the main hub that to access you need to complete a side quest first that goes from being a neat bonus from being the sole way to navigate further levels. Again, perhaps it was introduced by other characters, but the craziness of it all makes it hard to focus on the details. That reminds me about the hidden pizza box quest, that one really threw me off rails. Nevertheless, I did enjoy playing the game. It may have some oddly placed spike of difficulties and some hidden content, but eventually you should be able to pull it through. The game's pretty chill and quite big considering the low price of 20 euros. The game has it all and nothing feels incomplete like other crime fighting titles. I would suggest anyone who's a fan of action adventure titles like Zelda to give this title a shot. So there you have it. This was the story in the review of Super Kane Magic Zero. Producing the channel, we've explored failed projects like Joven to Rebelle while having a good laugh, but this time I'm truly happy about the Italian made video game that passed all the tests with flying grades. The title is not a masterpiece per se, but within its scope and its uniqueness, I would say that it's able to reach many of the goals promised in that 9 year old video when the game was firstly announced. If you like the gameplay style I described, as well as comics in general, I suggest you to give this game a shot. I'm a bit biased being a fan of the creator but I do consider Super Kane Magic Zero a hidden gem. For the non-Italian audience watching this video, I remind you that not only is the game translated into English and many other languages, but also that the content is enjoyable despite not knowing the creator and not being Italian. If you made it this far, I wanted to thank you one too many Super Kane Magic Zero times for watching today's video. This review was quite relaxing to write, and boy if I'm glad to talk about indie games made in Italy. Do let me know in the comments what future titles I should play and review next. Do not forget to leave this video a like, to share it and to subscribe for more. I wish you a wonderful day and until next time, arrivederci!